know the engineer that we're going to be covering for EIE this unit is an environmental engineer. What do you think that engineer does? There's no wrong answers because it's what you think. So think for a second and instead of telling me, write it on the sticky note for me. Okay? When you write it down, do me a favor, you can get up quietly and go ahead and stick your sticky on this chart here. We're trying to see what you know before we start. Do you need a pencil? So let's take a look. I'm going to read out some of the things that you guys said. I think that environmental engineer helps the environment so it can be clean. I think an en uh, environmental engineer is when a man or a woman can make new things, but take it so that it works very well. So we'll check back to this chart as we continue with the story. Okay. So today's storybook that we're working on is called Taya's Pollution Solution. This is going to take place in Washington State. So if we look here on our map of North America, it's our United States, we have Washington State over here. Who can come up and tell me where we're located in Florida? Where do you think we're located? And I want the rest of you guys to take a look at where she's pointing to see. Right around there, and that is Florida. If you guys agree, give me a thumbs up if you agree with her. Okay, nice job. Go ahead and have a seat, thank you. So we are located all the way down here, and Taya's story takes place up in Washington State. And she actually lives in an area called Al Peninsula of Olympic, okay? And she lives in a tribe called the Lower Elwha Kalam Tribe. So before we start going over the story, I want you to go ahead and create for me this tree map. As we're reading the story, you guys are going to be keeping track of who the characters are, the setting, the plot, and the big thing is the problem. What's going on in this storybook? How are we going to find a solution to what's going on? So chapter one, a discovery at the river. I took grandma's journal out of my backpack and flipped to the page I wanted. At the top was a paragraph written in grandma's small, careful script. How many photos do you need to take before you've matched all her drawings, Sam asked. Just two more, I said. Mama had given me Grandma's journal a few months ago. Does anybody remember what the exact location of where this river is? What state did we say this river is located in? Washington State. What do you guys think? Should I read a little more so we can find out what the plot is? Yeah. Okay. I turned the camera lens to make the focus clearer. The clearer the tree became, the more the river sparkled. Flecks of red, yellow, and blue light seemed to be skipping and dancing on the surface. I've never seen the water look like this, I thought. They saw oil in the river. How did they feel once they saw that? Why would they feel sad? Because of the river that they, that's important to their tribe and the people who live around it. They, that's how they survive and stuff. That's where they get their foods and salmon. Okay, so that's a resource for the tribe, for their yes. people. The, all of the poor animals in the water will die and they won't have any food to eat. Ah, so she took it a little further. We're going to talk a little bit about the ecosystem, okay? Now, this was an ecosystem 50 years ago. You see how it says picture one on there. Okay, so everybody just kind of take a look. And this is the ecosystem 50 years later. I want you to use your markers and I want you to circle what are some of the things that are the same? What are some things that are different now about the ecosystem? Now, this one is not the same. That's Let's see, long time ago in the past, there was only two fish, and now in the present, there's multiple fish. Who can maybe explain to us what's the reason that this is occurring? 50 years ago, there was birds eating the fish, and, and today, there's no fish, so that means there's more. I mean, there's no bird, that means there's more fish. Because uh, maybe the fish had babies, and the other, the fish babies had babies, and the fish babies, that rich fish babies have babies, and the fish babies have fish babies that have fish babies that have. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a continuation, right? It is continu it's a continuation of the life cycle. And all living things go through a life cycle, right? 
And you know we've talked about life cycles in the past, so let's take a look at our salmon life cycle. When you're ready, see if you can kind of put them in order. Do we have a better understanding of how a life cycle works? Okay, what are some other life cycles we can compare to? What are some other ones that we've done in the past that you've learned about, even not even just in fourth grade, but what, what else have you learned about for what other life cycles? Life cycle of turtles. Life cycle of turtles. The life cycle of a plant. Life cycle of a plant. Let's get back to our storybook. Let's go ahead and look at chapter four. It says April 8th. I followed Mama into the kitchen. She took a bowl out of the cupboard and filled it with water. Can you get me the cooking oil? I pulled the bottle down from the shelf and handed it to her. Look, it's a model, Mama said. The bowl of water models the river. And the cooking oil models the oil that was spilled. So what did they construct? What did they make in the kitchen? A miniature version of the oil spill. OK, a miniature version of the oil spill. And when we make something, what is that called? When we make something similar to something else, we can show it. We can't bring the solar system into our classroom, but we can have a what of our solar system? A model. A model. How many people thought that? Nice job. Kiss your brain. Thank you so much, Thomas, I said. There's no need to thank me, Thomas said. Without you and Sam, we wouldn't have been able to do nearly as good of a job cleaning the oil in the river. Nah, Sam said. We just helped a little bit. You helped more than you realize, Thomas said. You reminded me and the other engineers about the connections among everything in the ecosystem. Among the river and the plants and animals, the connections between things in the environment that people can either nurture or destroy. The end. Aww. We're going to do a review of the story using the engineering design process. This group is going to be asked. Okay, so you got to think about all the different questions that she asked. She was, she was imagining cleaning the river, but then her mom, her mom told her to come into the kitchen and they made a little model. And so she imagined that model was a river and the oil was the oil spill in the river. I want you to share out because I want everybody to be able to hear what solution and what ideas we got from the story, okay? During the during the model that her mother her in her her in the in her mother was doing, she asked um, the question how how would she um, get the oil out of the river? When she was in the kitchen with her mom, um, she put the bowl of water and the oil in it, and then they had the plan how they would take the oil out of the bowl. Now take a look back at the engineering design process. So did she ask questions? Yeah. Did she imagine the process? Yeah. Now, was it only done by her, or did other people assist? Other people assist. OK. Was there a plan put in place? OK. Did the plan get created? Did it work the first time? No. Maybe did it work the second time? No. Maybe. Maybe. Did it work maybe the third time? No. OK. Maybe. And were they able to improve on it? Yes. Did we come up with the solution in the end to the problem? Yes. Thank your group, <laughs> thank your partners, and head back quietly to your seat. Thank you. My name is Christina Hung. I have been teaching here for nine years at RPE, STEM Museum Magnet School. When EIE got brought to us, we were one of the six sprouting STEM schools that received a grant for Broward County, and EIE was introduced to our school as one of the curriculums we would kind of infuse with what we have here with Common Core and the standards that we're working on. I think my favorite part about lesson one, you build your background. You know nothing, the book looks nice, the cover looks nice, but then you're like, what is this gonna be about? And the storybook really lends itself because it brings you into their world. It talks about the engineer. It gives you what you do learn already about literacy with character, setting, plot, but it includes more of that. You get to see what the engineer is actually doing, so it's a preview. It's, it's, it's almost like, hey, it pulls you in and you're, you wanna know more. And with the storybook, it does that.